I support all my people uh, that uh, that that are my friends that are YouTube music YouTubers. Mary Spender. Mary's been putting out a video every single day. I was talking to her the other day. She's she's in Spain now, and um, I love Mary's channel. Mary is is so good at just getting on and talking, and um, and she makes great videos, and. Um, She's a very dear friend, and um, and she's been posting every day over the past week or so, and um, on her music YouTube channel. But she's a she's a person that's a songwriter, uh, and she uh, this is actually a great um, template for how to get your songs out there. Because Mary makes videos about other things, like she'll do a thing on guitar re reviews, right? But then she'll talk about her life, and she talks about her music. And then she did a video with John Mayer. She did a this great video about how she heard some things from Instagram. John Mayer uh, doing his uh, one of his songs, and she did a what she thought the song would be. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen Mary's video on that. And then John Mayer reached out to her, and she debuted his uh, his song on her channel. You know, but she uh, routinely puts her own music on her channel. And Mary's got 500,000 followers. Not quite. She gets millions of views on her channel. And there's your there's your demonstration of it right there. Right there. She figured it out. And to me, that is kind of, you know, and I can think of a number of channels like that, of people that, that have developed followings on YouTube, on Instagram, and they put their music out there. He is the best. <laughs> I don't have the ability to do a live stream at the moment, so this is going to be <laughs> a video equivalent. Anything could happen right behind me. I am also apologetic for my face being so gigantic, but this lens is the best at night. And I want to talk about uh, a video a friend of mine made it was in fact a, a genuine live stream called Why Record Labels Are Finished uh, by Rick Beato. Because he mentioned me in it and it was really, really quite amazing. And he was talking about how many emails he receives every day about people promoting their music and what's the best way and how do they get signed and how do they reach major labels and the thing I found is that people don't email me asking that. I think it's very clear that I have a, <laughs> I, I don't have any experience in that field. Um, so people don't ask me that question. I often get asked, would you like to be signed by a record label? And again, as most of you will know, I, I don't feel the need to seek that out. And to be honest, it's a game you have to play and you have to have the contacts to be able to get there and what surprises some people and does not surprise me whatsoever is that I've gotten myself to this point and I've probably had five potential emails from record labels but nothing has ever ever followed past just like a little introduction. I'm always willing to hear people out but I've never been offered a major label deal. Um, so it is interesting that people still get in touch with Rick asking for that uh, advice on that route when um, uh, he, he strongly advises against it, like why would you need it? And um, the thing that people do often ask me about is CDs because I actually still sell CDs. Now it's not because I think that the CDs are going to be the next big thing. Um, it's because it's nice to sell a, a physical copy of something that you've made and I like signing all the CDs in my merch store, for example. I like having CDs at um, live shows when I'm actually on tour. But the thing I recommend not doing is actually selling CDs unless you have um, probably like a, an, an audience size that you could sell to just like 0.01% of that audience and you'd make your money back on, on the 
the cost of a CD. So for me, it's a very small amount of people that actually buy physical merchandise from my merch store. And that's okay because it fulfills itself, but it's not something I'm reliant on. Do I let a skateboarder pass? No, do they? No, we'll just continue on. Um, so I just want to talk through some of the points that Rick made because Rick and I are friends and he recently has given me a lot of advice more on YouTube obviously and I really respect what he's done with his channel and the community he's grown and it's just you know it's just really admirable and he's taken everything he knows and he just gives it away for free and the videos are just remarkable the way he talks to camera you really feel and now I am friends with him, but I was a fan before I met him. He, he's exactly the same in real life. Um, not that this isn't real life, you know what I mean. But anyway, he was talking, and this is something interesting that I haven't actually thought properly about, but the life cycle of different types of press when it comes to releasing your physical copy or your digital stream, uh, you know, your Spotify um, profile or anything, like all the promotion that you get, whether it's through blog posts or through genuine, um, you know, New York Times or, you know, established, established people, Rolling Stone, Rolling Stone being one of the names Rick mentioned. The life cycle of a YouTube video is so unique. Everything else is kind of like a flash in the pan and that doesn't really work anymore because there are a million things being released every day. Um, not just music, films, YouTube videos, content. And the interesting thing about YouTube videos is that it might not do that well on the first day, it might not do that well in the first hour, um, might not do that well in the first month, but you'll have made a piece of content that will then have a resurgence later on. And some of my videos have, you know, some one example of one, one of the um, carbon fiber guitar uh, videos, the second one I made, um, in the first month it was an absolute flop and I kind of thought it would be a, I thought it would be a hit because the first one had been so successful. And actually um, in the first month it got 30,000 hits but then it just sat there and sat there and sat there and worked its way up and now it's got over a million hits. And it, it shot up, but far uh, after the first day or week, which I thought was the most important part of a YouTube video. And that's how people see music. They think that Friday, New Music Friday, is the the only moment and it kind of is because if you don't have the flash in the pan then and you don't have all that press around it uh, Spotify will move on to the next big thing and it's kind of out of your control and Spotify doesn't then push it later unless you're on a major label and you have access to playlists and maybe you have a bit of a back catalogue and then they suddenly favour it and they, they put it in a playlist um, but YouTube you at least know it's not, um, you, you know it's part of the algorithm that maybe something might not be completely successful at first but there'll be a keyword in there that will do well later on. I just thought that was really interesting the way Rick spoke about it and the way he just, you know, he puts my mind at rest knowing that I'm doing exactly the right thing. I am in, in I'm exactly where I want to be. Um, and I really enjoy YouTube for that, that whole reason. You just, you kind of, they find an audience for you and not many other platforms actually do that. And then they also, you know, they share the income with you too, which is obviously very, very important. Actually something I'm pretty happy sharing and it's, it's going to sound like, um, I just hope it's an interesting thing for other musicians to know. It has taken me this long to get to this point, but I released an acoustic version of a song that I haven't actually 
officially released yet. Just, uh, just popped it up on YouTube last Friday. And I think I've probably earned about 50 pounds from that video being up. So I've earned a little bit of money for a song that I haven't released yet. And for 50 pounds from streaming services, it would take thousands more streams on Spotify to get to that point. And for YouTube, I think it was sat at around, it's pro probably sat around 20,000 views now. So the AdSense might have gone up, but that's just interesting. That's 20,000 hits um, on a track that I haven't released and I've already earned a little bit of money from it. So yeah, the question he addresses is how do you take what you've done and promote it to get people to hear it? Because you want people to hear the thing you've been working on a lot. But as he quite rightly said, the old school business model is, is done. And every time someone tells me they're going to throw the music over to radio stations or pay for traditional PR or uh, buy a thousand vinyls when they don't necessarily have the audience to buy a thousand vinyls. I just say like, what, what are your habits? Where do you listen to music? If you're reliant on the radio, is that because you're a radio fan? Because if you're a radio fan, then go for radio. If you really genuinely listen to the radio every single day and you discover new music from that, and while you're driving, you remember the name that they shout out in a brief moment and they only play the song once. Um, you remember that name and you go home and you discover it, then great, that works for you. But that's never worked for me. That's never how I found music. On very rare occasions, maybe 10 years ago, it's now started to rain. So here we go. This is my live stream, just going swimmingly. Um, Record labels own pieces of the Spotify pie, very true. If you think as an unsigned artist you're going to get on to a playlist, um, you might have to have a reality check. I don't think I've ever been on a playlist. But I don't rely on Spotify. I put stuff up there for people to listen to who use Spotify. Same with Apple Music, same with all the streaming sites. Like I want to be everywhere always because I don't want to limit my audience and like if they don't have a certain thing and they don't want to go over to that place then I just I just want to be able to um, give them access to whatever I'm creating this is why I've started making TikTok videos yes okay so this next part was this um, thing you said it was just interesting because it's really started raining now Okay, we're just we're going through it. Um, as a YouTuber, it's hard to promote your own music. Now, that is true. Uh, a few of my friends, they do make their own music, but they have found that because those videos don't do that well, they focus on the thing that does well on their channel. And that's understandable. You, if you have a business to run, you want to um, make the product your audience wants, but at the same time, you also have to make your heart sing. And that's why I don't mind if I put up a video and it gets 10% of what a normal video would get. I don't really mind because that video will just sit on the platform, sit on my channel, and you guys will know that I am a genuine singer-songwriter. I enjoy making videos about many topics, but the one thing that got me here was singer-songwriting. And, you know, I'll continue to do it no matter what. Um, so, he then started going into a community that I thought was really interesting because this is how I discovered that you could actually be a musician without being a, like you could be a full-time musician without being a chart topper. Um, and that's the prog metal community. So a few years ago, I met the crew of, uh, of prog musicians and I have become friends with some of them and they honestly really understand their community and they understand their niche 
and they really just gave me a lot of faith and they really understand the internet. Um, you know, and then you guys have seen me make a heavy metal cover of Sultans of Swing. You've seen me duet with Rob Scallon. And those kinds of music are just so, like, people in, in the main music industry forgot that there was a need for them. And YouTube was the place for that. And that's why these channels have millions of subscribers. These bands, uh, Tosa Nabazi, uh, Pliny, um, Periphery, Polyphia, they have this incredibly loyal following because of the internet. So it's a very healthy scene. I fully agree with that. Then also companies like Neural DSP um, doing all the signature plugins. Bands like Wolfpack, not prog metal, obviously, but Wolfpack and the way Cory Wong uses the internet and what Wolfpack did with those songs that went so, so viral. And they wouldn't have made sense on like the, the chart topping thing. And yet they sell out Madison Square Garden. It's all just, it's all really exciting. And, uh, you know, one of some of the final thoughts, he was talking about Guthrie Govan. Um, I knew of Guthrie because of Vigier. He did play Vigier for a time. Maybe he still does, won't, won't confirm, can't remember. What, Anyway, um, but it's the same type of idea. I mean, Rick just touched upon absolutely everything. And then he also brought me up, which is just amazing. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Rick's video. And um, yeah, well, why record labels are finished. There'll always be those kind of companies, but the thing, we all need to remember is that they are banks basically and if a bank gives you money they want something in return same with record label and to make the kind of money that they're after from something that you're so emotionally attached to i think is quite dangerous i think it's quite worrying and that's why so many people fall out with their record labels they get signed they get dropped um, there, are, there are just a million more nightmare stories than there are success stories. Whereas with YouTube, it's all in your control. But as Rick said, you might have to work quite hard. And um, yeah, on that note, I just want to say thank you for being subscribed to this channel. Some of the videos I make uh, over the next few weeks, um, will be very candid and informal and I really hope you stick around and I hope um, you see uh, that I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm just always trying to speak about things that are relevant and do let me know if you have any questions in the comments below. But otherwise, subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, go and subscribe to Rick, obviously, and I'll see you very soon.